Thanks for joining me on the channel. I've made a bit of a boo-boo and I'm having to record this intro in upstairs in the house. I uh, I did do a bit of an intro down by the car. I was doing a video today on uh, checking the turbo. Um, but unfortunately when I plugged in my power bank I hadn't realised that it actually turned on and started recording. Um, so when I turned it, switched on the camera to start recording I was actually turning it off. One of those things. Anyway, so let's uh, get into the video and uh, check out this turbo. Okay, I've put you in a slot for watching me take like the air intake pipe. Um, I, I was just, I think there's a wire in the way there, let me just sort that out. Okay, I was just saying how a really useful tool. I'm not a name brand person. I don't buy a pair of Levi's. I go to Just Jeans and buy two pairs for the same price. I'm not one of those people that goes out and buys expensive stuff for the name. These are all these screwdrivers. They work perfectly well and they're nice and cheap. However, this screwdriver is a godsend. I don't know why I say godsend. I really don't. But anyway, so it fits into that slot there and it's nice and long. But just be careful because it can short out the battery. Nice and long. Okay, so we start with this one. And this one I normally can do by hand. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So I'll, I'll undo this all the way, as far as I can get it anyway. And then pull it back this way so I don't lose it. Okay, that frees that up. You need to take this pipe off. There we go. And then we need to take this pipe off. On your car, this may this pipe may be the recirculation for the EGR. On my car, it's the exit pipe from the catch can which I've shown you in a previous video alright so effectively what we're doing is going between the battery terminal and the intercooler pipe down in there there is a little jubilee clip with a flat blade in it so I can undo that with this ok and you've got to be careful you don't touch that battery terminal because if you do you shot out and make a circuit you don't want to do that. Okay. This you could just pull off now. I've undone it. It does. And that's that clear. I use the Aldi magnetic light. So can we see? No. Right, now you can see. Into the turbo there. And you can see the compressor. Now, let's try rotating it. It feels fairly, fairly loose. I wonder if there's a flat spot or something. I'm not convinced that's the issue to be fair so if you try grabbing hold of that nut you can check for sideways movement so that's side to side yes there is some alright so I'm not happy with that. That's uh, definitely got some side to side movement on it. Um, it looks like I'm going to have to get another bearing rebuild kit. So I'll put this back together again. And then uh, I can still run the car. It just runs a bit flat. But I suspect what's happening is the air pressure the exhaust is pushing the, uh, the wheel to one side and it's getting a bit caught. Yeah, it's definitely got too much sideways movement. So, what you can do, you can you can put your finger on it and wiggle it from side to side. It's moving about a millimeter, but that's too much for something that's spinning at such a speed. Also, you can grab it and pull it backwards and forwards and see if there's any end flow. Um, I can't really show you that now because it's hard to get in there, but uh, you can do that. I have to say though, it does spin fairly freely. So spinning is not an issue 
And there isn't much up, up and down, it's just side to side. Okay, here's something I'd forgotten I had. This is the inside of a turbo. This is the exhaust side, and that's the side we've just been looking at there. So what happens is exhaust gases hit this and turn it, like so, and that turns this and forces air into the engine. Okay? Now what we're checking for is movement left and right, so like this. This is not too bad, it's got a slight movement, but also, can you hear that? There's a lot of end flow, it's moving backwards and forwards. If you see anything like this, can you see that little mark on there? That means that it's been balanced, that they've taken them grind marks out to balance the turbo. Okay, and you can get turbo cassettes balanced. I'm not sure where you get them done, but you can. Anyway, that, there you go, that's the insides of a turbo. Um, just for your information, inside there is not seals. There are no seals and there are no bearings. The, the turbo runs on, on copper bushes and the seals at the end are like little tiny um, piston rings tiny little things but they're not really a seal what they do is they just stop anything getting out if it needs to but most of the, the oil is lubricated inwards and that's what and forcing it inwards is what causes it to stay in the turbo and not get fired out the holes so it's not under pressure or anything it's just lubricated okay hopefully that helps okay so i'm going to turn you around and move the battery pack um angle you forward the reason i've done this is because i'm going to refit this uh, intercooler pipe and the reason i'm doing that is so i can still use the car because it's still drivable just has a bit of a flat spot so let's get rid of the light So I always fit the turbo end first down here because that, this is a, it's harder to fit and b it's more important that this end is on properly than than the other end. It's that it gets all gummed up with oil and and stuff like that if you don't have a catch can fitted. So you might find that yours is a bit gummed up as well. Okay, so we're tight there now. Just move you back around so you can see. screws the clip right out of its holder which is not very good you can't get good clips anymore everything's crap these days it really is okay so that's it back on we don't bother with the bolt in here it never lines up anyway so it would do if it wasn't broken somebody's broken it in the past so it ain't gonna get lined up so we're back together now, we can use the car again, and I was uh, now going to go away and order myself a new turbo rebuild kit. Okay, so I'm in the manual, and I'm trying to see what sort of turbo it is to give me a bit more of a, a hint to um, what I can buy and where I can get it from. So the prices seem to have gone up quite a lot, so... Uh, Induction, probably there, I would have thought. Uh, we've got to make 
sure we're on the right engine. Okay, so I went online and had a look at the forum and I found out that somebody had done a turbo rebuild and they'd used an RHF5 turbo rebuild kit and I've just searched that into the uh, manual and there it comes up, model of turbocharger, IHI, RHF5. So fortunately for us that fits on quite a number of different vehicles including Subaru and uh, I can now find a kit by searching for that. And this one from the UK is looking quite favourable uh, because it has that part and this part which the other kit down here doesn't have. Okay, and it's more expensive. But there's there's less screws in this, there's only seven screws in here and in this one there's nine, twelve screws. But screws are not a problem, I can reuse screws. It seems to have everything else, it's got the back plate, it's got this and it's got this. So there's the back plate and it's got those two. It's got the two copper... Uh, bearings and that's the brass bearings and that are there the two ceiling piston reoring things the flat washer there which is there and it's got a bigger washer this one but it seems to be its replacement for this but this is more important so I'm going to buy this one I think um, hopefully it'll come pretty quickly hi everybody um, things have changed a little bit since I made the uh, previous video um, the turbo rebuild kit I didn't order that the reason being is it was in the UK and the sorry let me take my glasses off uh, it was in the UK and um, the uh, the forecast for delivery was March June 2023 now that has to be just a, a rough estimate but by god that's a hell of a rough estimate and that's six months away so I was like oh do I order it I, I sent him a message and he didn't respond because they would have been in bed when we were awake and I'm, I'm like oh anyway I came across um, I'm going to need my glasses back on now um, a turbocharger an, 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 an aftermarket one on eBay now I am not an advocate of buying things for Jackaroo on eBay but this one came marked up SL Turbo and I thought oh that's interesting I um, I wonder what SL Turbo is so I did a bit of research as you do and SL Turbo is a Chinese company now that would put me straight off normally but they have a website and they seem to be a well organized bunch um let me let me uh let me show you what uh <coughs> so i don't know if you can see this it was a bit bright when i tried it before it looks okay but that is sl turbo's um factory in china so I'm thinking, hang on a minute, they've got a factory making turbos. That's pretty good. So I looked at a few things and um and they've got a lot of they've got a bit of a history there and they've got some honours, even though they can't spell correctly. Um they have a product plan and they've got quality assurance. And when you look at these pictures, if this is the factory that this turbo comes from, that's pretty good. They reckon they use German machinery and they reckon they um, make things up to the best of their ability. Now, there's nothing wrong with Chinese manufacturing as long as it's done properly. It's the cheap tat my Chinese manufacturing that we suffer from. And this looks like a pretty organised, well-built and engineered factory to me. If that is actually the factory inside and um, if that's the case then I'll buy an SL Turbo tomorrow and so I did and look how much it cost me $209 for a full Holden Jackaroo full on turbo everything the whole lot right it's got a nameplate with a, a serial number and everything on it um, this is from the seller 
so it comes with the, the, the certificates and everything it's got gaskets and seal it's even got a pair of gloves you can't say fairer than that that looks to me like the bee's knees so as long as it fits we'll be laughing and they reckon that this turbo is for the 4JX1 3 litre 157 horsepower Jackaroo engine um, you can't argue with that now if you if you think about it think about the maths here I was buying a seal kit right and the seal kit was going to cost me uh, around about $80 including postage from the UK okay so if I did that if I took my turbo apart I put the seal kit in rebuild the turbo put it all back together I've then got to get the shaft balanced so I go and get it balanced that's what that another hundred dollars hundred and eighty dollars and I can buy a whole brand new turbo from this this mob if it's any good for two hundred and nine dollars so that's what I'm going to do and I just plug it in and I've got a brand new turbo now that gives me an additional spare which I can then buy a bit rebuild kit for and do it in my own at my leisure rebuild it have it as a spare now that gets me on to my next point there, are, there is a company in the UK that makes turbo rebuild kits they make turbos and make all sorts but but generally they make turbo rebuild kits now I'm just trying to open up my email without my glasses on so I'm not doing very well this is what I need my glasses for let me just have a look uh, hopefully I've kept it there we go so the company is called Wabtech Corporation and they make a thing called mellet parts now mellet parts are made in the UK and I I messaged this company and said um, my name is Dave I live in Berwick and I have a Holden Jacker which is rebadged Isuzu Trooper fitted with a 4JX1 engine I believe the turbo is an RHF5 and I definitely need a rebuild kit for it would you be able to price it the correct kit or offer an alternative as I need something that is made in the West as I am sick of cheap China garbage from China that lasts six months and is worn out that is what I sent to them however they sent back unfortunately we do not sell to the public as you're in Melbourne I would recommend that you make contact with Eastern Turbo in copy they stock mellet parts kits and turbochargers they should be able to help you out with the options on what you need and provide you with something that isn't Chinese. Obviously I'm in a bit of a, a dig because they don't have that same issue in the UK as we do here. Now, uh, Kurt W. Plumer is the Industrial Product Group Manager for Australia and New Zealand, would you believe? And Wabtec Corporation have and I'll, uh, have a, um, a headquarters in New South Wales, Rydalmere. So, um, obviously, they're the people to buy from. So maybe they make those parts in Australia. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to message um, Eastern Turbo and see what they come back with. It'll be interesting. Anyway, um, so that's the latest update. Um, I'm getting the new turbo and. I'm going to rebuild the old one with a with a, a melee kit.